risk causing permanent irreversible damage to your eyes, lungs, or your expensive laser engraving machine, then please watch this video all the way until the end. I used to think that laser safety simply meant wearing glasses and venting it out a window, but there's a lot of other dangers that you probably never thought of. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Carrie. I mainly have a cricket background, hence why my channel name is called Cricketer. But over the years, I've expanded into various other crafts like sublimation, paper crafts, sticker making, and most recently, laser engraving. I have tons of tutorials for all of these DIY crafts on my channel. Subscribe if you want to learn more and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Since I'm so used to working with vinyl with my Cricut, one of my first thoughts when I got my laser was how fun it would be to stick some vinyl onto the wood first and then laser engrave it. I have about a hundred rolls of really cool looking vinyls that would add tons of color and texture to my laser engraving projects. I thought instead of making a plain wood Christmas ornament, maybe I could stick some vinyl to the wood first and then cut it out. I actually did this when I first got my machine, which was such a stupid mistake. It worked and the project came out cool looking, but I was completely unaware of the dangers of what I had just done. I always say on my channel that I make the mistakes so that you don't have to. The dangers of burning through vinyl are very serious and I'm going to explain why. Most vinyl on the market is made out of a material called PVC. PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride, which is a type of plastic that contains chlorine. When you laser cut PVC vinyl, you're burning through it, which releases toxic chlorine gas and hydrochloric acid, which can be harmful to your health and the environment. When PVC is burned, it releases harmful chemicals like dioxin, which is a carcinogen. Short-term exposure to chlorine gas causes mild to severe eye and nose irritation, wheezing, and other respiratory problems. Long-term exposure can have fatal implications. It can also damage your laser cutter by corroding the metal parts and lenses because now your machine is coated in hydrochloric acid. It's toxic to humans and corrosive to most anything it comes into contact with. Vinyl isn't the only thing that contains PVC either. Through my extensive research, I also learned that faux leather or artificial leather is often made out of PVC. Faux leather is such a commonly laser engraved material. I laser engraved some leather patches to make custom hats on my channel about a week ago. The patches that I bought are listed as leatherette and as laser supplies, so I hope that these don't actually contain PVC. I did ask a question asking if they contain PVC, but I don't know if I'll ever hear back. I would avoid burning any types of plastics in your laser. Another surprising material that may contain PVC is canvas. Modern canvas is usually made out of cotton or linen, but sometimes PVC. It's really important to know exactly what your material is made out of before you burn through it with your laser. I came across this website with an article titled, Can I Cut Vinyl Slash PVC in a Laser? They have several photos of totally corroded and destroyed machines from cutting PVC. This article says, This is or was a $30,000 Epilogue Legend 36 EXT that was used to cut vinyl stickers. The hydrogen chloride gas created by the lasing process turned into hydrochloric acid and even with a more than adequate exhaust system caused irreparable damage to the machine. These deadly corrosive fumes were also vented outside into the open air without thought or regard to the possible effects. The machine, exhaust dusting, fan, and vent area were all in similar condition. It would have been cheaper to buy a $400 vinyl cutter than to sacrifice a $30,000 laser engraver. If you want to read more of these articles where I found all of this information, I'll leave links to all of my sources in my video description. If you're interested in using vinyl on your laser engraving projects, one amazing machine for doing so is this X-Tool M1. The X-Tool M1 is the world's first two-in-one laser engraver and blade cutting machine. It has a laser head for those laser engraving and cutting projects, and it also has a blade that magnets into place so you can safely cut vinyl. I obviously own this machine and it's awesome. I've made some projects like this Easter egg holder where I would cut the wood out with a laser cutter and then cut out some vinyl with the same design. I stuck the vinyl onto the wood to give the project tons of beautiful colors, really taking it to the next level. I have a tutorial for this project on my YouTube channel. Another interesting material I came across that you shouldn't laser cut is glued materials like plywood. This website states, glued is a broad term and a deeper analysis is required. Plywood is a glue laminated board made of alternating green veneers. 
It is usually bonded with phenolic resin, and because the resin layers are very thin, it generally cuts well. Phenolics release formaldehyde when cut, so good extraction and a carbon filter mask are must-haves. I think I have pretty good extraction. I have the hose that vents out of the window that came with the machine, and I also added an inline duct fan to the hose to help pull out the air even more. But I never thought about wearing a carbon filter mask when laser engraving. I did a quick search on Amazon for carbon filter masks, and I was surprised that these types of masks came up. I would have never thought to wear a gas mask like this when laser engraving. I guess you only need that if you're burning through more toxic types of materials like glued plywood. I would rather just avoid that type of wood altogether. Let me know in the comments, do you wear a mask when laser cutting and engraving? If so, what type of mask do you wear? A full on gas mask, a surgical mask, an N95 mask, or nothing at all? I've never worn a mask when laser engraving, but now I'm thinking maybe I should start. If you can't vent your machine out of a window, the second option is to purchase a fume extractor or also called a smoke purifier. This is a big box full of filters that filter out the smoke to help purify your air. Make sure if you use a fume extractor that you don't forget to change out your filters. It can be easy to forget and you don't want to be breathing in any smoke. Now let's move on to my next topic, eye safety. This is probably a more obvious one, I always knew that lasers were harmful to your eyes, but I didn't realize just how dangerous they really were. I have three types of laser engravers in my craft room. All of them are diode lasers with the exception of my Laser Pecker 4, which is a two-in-one diode and infrared laser. Without proper eye safety, a diode laser can cause permanent eye damage in less than one one thousandth of a second. Blue diode lasers can destroy your retina and cause permanent vision loss. This article states, the most hazardous laser radiation is that generated with a blue or green diode laser. Diode laser light at 532 nanometers is not blocked by transparent materials, such as the lens of the eye, but passes through until it meets the retina. The retina absorbs the energy from the laser light and is damaged irreversibly. This can happen in less than one one thousandth of a second, faster than the eye can blink. Blue laser light is more damaging than green, although both can cause permanent damage to the eye. Most laser engravers come with safety glasses unless they're fully enclosed, which luckily these two of my laser engraves are. However, most of the glasses that I've come across are so cheap and flimsy. They don't fit on my face right and are always falling down. Like I could just look down and they fall right off. I've never felt safe working with these types of glasses. They're especially unsafe if you wear corrective eyeglasses underneath them, which will cause them to fit even more improperly and potentially fall off. Can you imagine if you were laser engraving and your glasses slipped or fell off and in one one thousandth of a second caused permanent eye damage? I don't know about you, but I really don't want to go blind. I started looking on Amazon to see if they made laser safety goggles that would never fall off of my face. Unfortunately, they're a lot more expensive than the typical glasses design. You can get cheap laser safety glasses for under $10, but the goggle styles range between $45 and $100. Even though they're a lot more expensive, I think they're worth every penny. You only get one set of eyes in your life and you need to protect them at all costs. When shopping for protective eyewear, not all glasses or goggles are created equally. You need to make sure that they offer protection against laser beams within the wavelength range of your machine. My Laser Pecker 4 is my only machine that I'm really concerned about eye safety with since my other two machines are fully enclosed. The Laser Pecker 4 has two different lasers with two different wavelengths a 10 watt 450 nanometer blue light laser and a 2 watt 1064 nanometer infrared laser. So when shopping for eyewear, I need to make sure that it protects against both of those wavelengths. I love my Wii Create Vision and my X tool behind me because they're both fully enclosed. Both machines are FDA class one certified. A class one laser is eye safe under all operating conditions and is safe under all reasonably anticipated conditions of use. This means that you don't need to wear additional eye protection when laser engraving. The tops of these machines are made out of the same material that safety glasses are made out of. The next safety tip that I want to go over is fire safety. I've seen even fully enclosed metal box lasers like the Wii Create Vision catch fire in one of the Facebook forums. This is very rare, but I'll explain how it can happen. When you laser cut wood, especially if the designs are small and intricate, small pieces of wood fall through the grate below. 
When your laser is cutting through a project, that beam can pass all the way through to the grate below and burn the dust or tiny debris. This is when the real risk of a fire happens. If one of those little pieces sparks on fire, it can quickly burn the wood around it or above it. This is why it's really important to empty your tray frequently so little bits of wood don't accumulate where they shouldn't. I would also recommend keeping a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket in your workspace and never ever leaving your laser unattended when it's in use. Laser cutting and engraving can be a really fun hobby and profitable side business, but it's important that you learn how to use your machine safely. If you're in the market for a laser engraver, I really love my Xtool M1 and my WeCreate Vision. They're both great machines, but definitely have some major differences. If you want to learn more about these machines, check out this video I made comparing the WeCreate Vision to the Xtool M1. I am part of both of their affiliate programs, so if you decide to buy one of the lasers through my link in my video description, I will earn a small commission at no additional cost to you. If you found this video helpful and learned something new, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button. If there's any safety tips that you have that I didn't mention in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel to learn more about laser engraving and Cricut crafts and click that notification bell so you never miss a new video. I post new content every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.